Okay, good, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our webinar, How to Run Advocates Faster and Lower Cost of the Rescale. I'm Mika Peggers, my head of marketing at uh, Rescale, and presenting today is Fanny, our director of solutions. Uh, before coming to Rescale, Fanny spent 10 years at Giselle in a variety of product sales and business development roles, so she's somewhat of an expert in advocates um, and the Smulia applications. Uh, we're about to get started, but I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items first. Um, first is that we are recording this webinar and we'll be distributing the recording later this week, as well as in the January newsletter at the end of the month. Um, also, if you have any questions during the webinar, please uh, make sure to type them in the questions section in the GoToWebinar panel and we'll address these at the end of the webinar in a Q&A session. Okay, Fanny, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mika. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining this uh, webinar. So today we're going to talk about how to run Abacus fast and at a lower cost with Rescale. So what's not to love here? Um, <clears throat> so first, let's talk about uh, the, the trend in the industry today. So what we see is generally the design cycle is getting shorter and shorter and uh, products are getting more and more complex. So that means you have more requirement to validate and more simulation to perform. Um, in the meanwhile, also the, the size of the simulation model keep on increasing. You're getting more and more physics and more and more components to consider. So if we look at the um, in t IT infrastructure at companies today, you either uh, have analysts not having any HPC at all, any clusters at all, or often you're gonna see um, a company with a, a large HPC on-premise, but you often see uh, the different users competing for this uh, compute uh, power. Uh, so resulting in job being queued and uh, resulting in the design cycle getting, getting longer. And often this, uh, this hardware they're using is also, uh, can get pretty, uh, pretty old as well. Um, so the way we want to address this issue is uh, through Rescale is to uh, allow you to uh, take advantage of uh, cloud computing and uh, unlimited compute power and uh, specialized hardware. So we're, we're, um, you have the choice to either embrace the cloud uh, completely and run all your simulation on the cloud, or you can uh, take a more hybrid approach to the cloud where you keep on uh, leveraging your on-premise HPC, but you can burst the overflow to, to the cloud. Um, so with, with Rescale, we're really providing you a way to transform your IT infrastructure to be able to keep up with, uh, with this higher uh, simulation demand and higher reliance on, on simulation. So the way you can do this is as your model size grow, um, you can either increase the number of cores or you can also leverage more specialized code that's going to give you a better performance. And as the number of simulation that you're performing is, is growing and you're accelerating the number of run, you can, uh, you can increase with the cloud and with Rescale, you can increase the number of parallel tasks, or you can also uh, leverage our DOE and uh, optimization framework to run, uh, uh, to explore more physics uh, and to uh, run um, uh, more, more design uh, options. Uh, so first, what I'd like to do is um, kind of look at um, how, to, uh, how to run a single job on Rescale and the benefits of, of this, um, and especially the benefits for a larger job. Um, so here, what I'd like to share with you is, um, is a benchmark. So what we took is, uh, we took an Abacus model about 550 uh, million degree of freedom. Uh, and we've run it uh, against different uh, uh, number of cores. So we started with eight cores, um, twin, uh, 32 cores, et cetera. Um, so you can notice the speed up. Um, so for, for about uh, 64 cores, you get a, a four times speed up uh, in your result turnaround time. At the same time, we've also computed the cost of your uh, Abacus uh, license uh, for each, uh, each number of cores. And as you can see, that license cost is also decreasing as you need less and less token as you run on, on a more core, in average. Um, 
So you can save, um, by using more cores, you can save uh, up to 35% of, uh, of license cost, cost total. So there's really an incentive for you to try to use as many cores as possible to save in license cost. Um, so of course, running those uh, simulations on the cloud is going to cost um, some amount of money. So each time, here we've computed the estimated cloud compute cost. So for each uh, for each core count, um, you're going to pay a little more more money. But if you add up the pay, the price of the hardware with the price of the license, um, the curve that we see in green. It's still very uh, beneficial for you to uh, to to run on the cloud. Also, as you as you run the simulation on the cloud, you only um, pay for what you uh, for what you use, um, and the the hardware is not sitting there um, unleveraged as well. So there's really um, with the the token system, there's uh, an incentive for you to. Uh, to, to run on the cloud and to run with as many uh, cores as possible as long as your model is going to scale. Another thing to consider is the hardware specialization um, that has been occurring uh, throughout the, the years. Um, the, the time where we only run on CPUs is, is really coming to an end now. Um, we have, um, for example, Abaca Standard is able to run on GPUs. Uh, Intel is coming up with its own version with the coprocessors, uh, and we're just seeing a trend of more and more like specialized hardware uh, dedicated for a specific uh, application. And the same is true with interconnect and network. Uh, while you add uh, ten, uh, while you add the uh, infinity band um, that's pretty popular for CFD, you're getting more and more specialized uh, interconnect um, hardware as well. Um, that that um, that is emerging. Um, so we really can't ignore this specialization because uh, each application is going to have a very different uh, performance on, on that hardware. Um, so it's important to have to to always use the the latest one. So in the case of um, Abacus, um, especially Abacus standard, we can uh, leverage GPUs. So if we look at this benchmark, uh, it's a Rolls-Royce model um, that is uh, about 5 million degree of freedom. And we've run it on uh, 16, 16 core CPUs, and we compared it with um, um, adding one GPU to that core count. So the, for the same amount of cores uh, with the addition of the GPU uh, hardware, you are, you are actually able to cut the time by, by two. Um, What's very interesting with Abacus here is that to add uh, one GPUs, it's um, the equivalent of adding one core to your total core counts. So basically, for 16, uh, core, 16 cores, you need 16 tokens. Uh, but for 16 cores with GPUs, it's the equivalent of 17 cores, and you still just need seven, uh, 16 tokens. So for the same price, are you able to cut the cut the the time uh, the elapsed time by by two? So it's very uh, it's extremely uh, interesting to use uh, GPUs to save cost with with Abacus. So as you increase the number of cores, so here with 32 cores, you can you see the same uh, performance improvement to about like twice uh, twice as fast. Uh, and we've also run the benchmark on two nodes. Uh, and in a similar way, we also see the, 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 same, uh, the same performance improvement. So using Rescale, you're able to take advantage of, the, of our global uh, HPC network. Uh, we have data centers um, around the world. We have uh, about 60 data centers in 28 locations. Uh, and you're able to, so you'll be able to leverage this network to scale uh, and limit, um, indefinitely and uh, leverage the, the latest hardware and latest uh, GPUs technology to run your uh, Abacus simulation. Uh, we also provide a platform that's turnkey. Uh, so really what it means is there's no IT deployment here, and the platform is also secured. So we're, um, we're certified SOC 2, and we also have, uh, we, you can also run your uh, Abacus simulation in a ITAR compliant environment. 
Um, so providing you with the hardware is, is not um, it's not enough. You are, we also provide you with uh, a large library of simulation software, more than 180 software as of today. Uh, either commercial software, or you can also bring your homegrown or open open source software as well. Um, so this library of software includes Abacus uh, Explicit, Abacus Standard, Abacus CAE, iSight, and also uh, Xflow. Uh, what's interesting is for each different application, we uh, we take a um, uh, application-centric tuning approach. So that means that for each application, we tune the cluster and the full stack of that cluster to that specific application. So from the MPI layer to the drive to the network components, the hardware. Um, so that's that's a one, one thing to consider is with, uh, with Rescale. Uh, and the, the last layers of Rescale is the tailored interface. Um, giving you the software, giving you the hardware is one thing, but we also want to make sure that when you submit the job to the cloud, you're also, very, um, you're also doing it in a very efficient manner. Um, so let's look at how we actually go and leverage this interface to run uh, uh, to learn to run uh, analysis and specifically here I'd like to talk about uh, large model handling uh, it can be frustrated to uh, wait for a long time to download or upload your input files so I want to show you how we uh, how we manage that using using Rescale. okay so I'm going to go ahead and um, demo so here I'm, uh, I'm uh, on Rescale, so I'm uh, directly in my, uh, my, my browser, and I can see uh, all the different jobs that I've run um, across the, the, the different weeks. Uh, so here I'm going to get started. I'm going, going to create a new job, and I'm going to call it Abacus uh, Crash Test. Okay. I can select uh, under what project I'd like this job to be uh, registered under, and I can also uh, choose the job type. So here I'm going to go ahead with just a basic job type. Um, here on the panel on the right, I have the different instructions that allow me to, um, to uh, always know what's the step forward. Um, so here I have the choice to uh, either upload the input file from my com computer, and I can do that using multi-threaded utilities. Or I can directly select the input file from the cloud storage that's um, available. So I'm going to go ahead and search for my, um, my input file here. I'm going to select it. All right, so that's pretty easy. So then the next step is uh, software settings. So I'm going to go ahead um, and uh, look for Abacus among our, our library of software. There we go. So from here, I can select what version of Abacus I'd like to run. Okay, so let's, for example, pick uh, for, uh, six, six, five, 614. Um, and here I have different templates, uh, common templates. So that really helps users that are not specifically used to run their job uh, in batch uh, or using a command line. Um, we, we guide them through how to do that. So you have different uh, comments to make sure that you take advantage of the hardware that you're picking uh, later. So here I'm just going to go ahead and pick the MPI template. And I'm going to um, just replace um, the job by the input file name. So the next step is to choose the license option. Uh, with Abacus, the only option that we have is uh, bring your own license. There's no uh, on-demand license available. Uh, but because my uh, license is uh, currently hosted on the Rescale platform on the cloud, I'm going to uh, use uh, um, the, the on-demand license here. OK. So the next step is hardware setting. Uh, so this is where it gets interesting. I can see the list of all the different hardware that I can choose. Um, so these different uh, memory, memory settings, different interconnect, different storage, and also have more specialized hardware if I'd like, that has, uh, like for example, in, uh, InfiniBand or higher memory counts. Um, so here for this uh, analysis, I'm just going to select um, uh, Onyx. 
and I will run it on um, four four CPU. But I can I can scale it to a really really large number as I as I'd like to. So here we go. Um, so the next step, so my analysis is now ready, uh, and I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, and submit save it first and uh, and submit it to the cloud. Um, so while this is running, what I'd like to do is go back to um, my uh, job dashboard and look at all the different job I run in the past. So I can see uh, the job the job title when it was created. Um, here I can see that my job is currently being verified and queued, um, but it's just um, it's going to be um, submitted instantly. Um, I can see who's the owner of this job. So, for example, I can see a different coworker that has been sharing job with me. And I also have the option to clone a job or to share it with other people. So that will uh, uh, allow me to take advantage of the cloud being a centralized location for all my simulation files, and to share that really easily with my uh, with my coworker. Okay. So I've already completed um, the, the, the crash test analysis. Uh, so what I'd like to do now is start a um, remote desktop session um, where I'd like to um, post-process my, uh, my analysis. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and enter the passwords for this. Um, it's going to take me. All right, so here I am in my remote desktop session. I can go and start Abacus CE. So what is very convenient here is I, I can um, post process um, an analysis without having to move the files uh, back and forth between my um, cloud environment and my on-premise environment. Uh, so I can look at the result file, um, I can decide to display, let's say, um, the, um, uh, the, the, the displacement. Um, I can go and uh, look at, sorry, I'm getting rusty here. Okay, here we go. I can look at the displacement. I can even uh, animate so you can see the performance are actually pretty, uh, pretty good. Um, from here, I can just, for example, go and um, uh, print print an image file. So I'm just gonna pick where on the desktop I'd like to um, to run it to uh, save the image. All right, so I'm just gonna run it. Save it right here and call it um, displacement. Oh, sorry, I kind of forgot to here. Um, there you go. Okay. Okay. All right, so now that I've saved the file, I can go back to rescale and uh, um, actually, um, oops, I can go back to my um, desktop session. Oops. There you go. Um, and I can sync this file back with. Um, I can uh, I can uh, sync this file back um, to um, the cloud uh, storage, so I can sync the image back. So this way, you don't you don't necessarily need to download and upload your uh, your result file uh, back and forth. You're able to post process it and save whatever image you need to save. Um, and uh, look at it um, back on the cloud um, on, on Rescale. Um, so let's look at let's look at it now. Okay. Now if I go to the results, I can see all my different result files, and I can see 
and uh, the displacement file that I saved, and I can even visualize it directly from Rescale. Okay. Um, while this is going, now I can go back to the job that I'm, uh, I'm running and look at uh, how, it's, how it's performing here. Right. So it's, it's still running. So while this is still running, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, continue the presentation. Um, so one, one thing that I'd like to mention is uh, when you have large files, uh, you, can, uh, you can either uh, use the remote desktop capability that I just demonstrated. Uh, you can also uh, leverage your Python script that you might have developed for post-processing and monitor some of the key uh, result value. So some of the keywords are very useful with Rescale. Some of the Abacus keywords are very useful. It's going to be not print or star monitor to be able to write down um, key value to the that, uh, the dot dat or dot file. Um, and then you can use a Python script to uh, extract those key value and display them uh, on Rescale. Okay. So what we've seen here is uh, while, while you run your job on the cloud, uh, you are able to uh, store those files, manage those files, and also process those files without having to move any of, the, uh, any of those large files. You can also share it with all your, um, all your co-worker or, or key stakeholder of that simulation. If you need to, you can uh, take your files in and out of the cloud environment back to your on-premise using uh, multi-threaded capabilities. And we also, uh, you can also leverage our API to uh, build an automatic file download application. Uh, all of that is done in a very secured way. Uh, your files are encrypted when it's at rest or when it's uh, in transit. Okay. So now that we've talked about running a single job and a large job on Rescale, I'd like to show you how to accelerate the simulation of throughput by uh, running more uh, like DOE parameter sweep and more deep configuration on, on Rescale. Um, so what we've seen here is you have the option with Rescale to run job um, in sequentially, um, so the equivalent of queuing job on your own promise. Uh, but the advantage of the cloud here is to increase the number of cores to, uh, to have a faster turnaround time of your results. Uh, but what's really interesting with the cloud too is instead of running job um, sequentially, you can also job, uh, run them concurrently. Uh, so instead of um, just selecting the number of cores, you can also select the number of slots that you want to run. So that means you want to run three jobs concurrently here. So the result is, instead of waiting two hours for your result here, you're only gonna, you're going to have your result back in, uh, in 45 minutes, cutting the time by, by three. Um, so to do that, I'd like to, um, to take a, a small example of uh, material calibration with, with Abacus. So what we've done here is took a, a simple, um, in simple geometry, a simple cube, and we've applied a uniaxial load to it. Now in the input file, what we've done is we've varied the strain applied to that, uh, to that uh, cube. Uh, so there's 10 different strain values that is going to be applied, and for each, each value and uh, each run, we're going to extract the reaction force and the displacement. The goal here is to be able to output uh, the stress versus the time uh, for each different strain value. Uh, so this way you're able to quickly compare um, how your material behaves um, within the simulation versus, uh, versus the, your, your, your test prototype. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you how we've set that up uh, in, uh, in Rescale. So I can go, I'm just going to go and open, uh, open the job that my coworker Raul uh, shared with me. And I'm going to just go through the setup. So, um, so first of all, um, we've, um, 
we've set up the the, par the parallel setting. So we've uh, we've defined that train is going to be my parameters, and it's going to vary uh, within this range. Okay. Then the next step um, is to define the template. So the template here is simply my uh, Abacus input file. And, uh, and we identify its train as being the parameter that is going to vary. Um, so I'm, I've selected Abacus uh, exactly the same way that I've done in the previous job. And also here, what's interesting is I'm leveraging the post-processing script uh, to be able to extract the key results, so to be able to extract the reaction force and the stress, um, but also to plot to generate a, a, a 2D plot for each of those uh, strain value. Now if we look at the hardware setting, um, I'm now leveraging the, the D, or DOE framework to be able to run uh, two jobs concurrently, uh, each on two, uh, on two, on two cores. Okay. So I've run that simulation already, uh, and I can look at the results. So for each different run, I can, I can see uh, where was my strain value, and now I can also display what's the final stress. Um, I can also plot uh, those different values um, and choose, choose what value to plot on, on the X or the y, uh, y axis. So here it's not very relevant, but if you actually do a true DOE, you're able to quickly select what design is is the best the best design. Okay. So if I go back to my results, for each run, I can go and either download the entire files, and I can also view the details of that specific run. Uh, so I can see the um, I can see the, the the ODB. I can see the input file for each each run. And here, um, thanks to that post-processing script, we were also able to uh, generate a graph showing the stress uh, versus the time. So here's a, like a good application on how you can uh, quickly submit 10 jobs at once and automate the, the, the post-processing using uh, Rescale DOE framework. You can also, as an option, um, choose to leverage the optimization framework of Rescale and uh, run the same analysis, but by uh, adding an optimization to it and leverage EyeSight here. Uh, so all you have to do is simply uh, upload your EyeSight uh, workflow and any input file or any um, prerequisite file that comes with it. Um, and, and just simply go ahead and run it on, on Rescale. Uh, so it's, it's very, um, very useful that you're also able to, uh, to run EyeSight and Abacus together, and it's actually a pretty good, uh, uh, pretty good way to uh, leverage your, your license efficiently as well here. Um, another use case of using, uh, using the DOE framework is you could leverage um, that DOE framework to run different um, assembly configuration. So here, for example, you can have um, you have three different parts, and each part has uh, its mesh stored in a different input file. And then you also have a library of material with each material stored in a different input file. So the first step is you can go ahead and zip all those files and um, upload it into Rescale. You don't, you don't need to unzip it once, once it's on Rescale. We're able to process that uh, without uh, having to do this operation. Okay. So the next step is in your parallel setting, you can uh, define a CSV file that basically uh, specify your different configuration. So uh, part one with part two using steel, or part one with part three using aluminum. Uh, so once the configuration is defined, uh, your template is simply going to be your master input file that, um, that leverage the star include abacus keyword to point toward the different, um, the different input file, the different child input file. So as a result, it's going to create one input file for each configuration. 
and then you can use the post-processing script to extract some of the key value and display it in a table in Rescale to be able to quickly uh, compare your different configuration uh, and see the, um, the, um, the, the different uh, behavior associated to it. Okay, so um, we are coming to an end of this webinar. So in, in summary, um, what we've seen here is using Rescale, you're able to accelerate the design exploration using uh, either the DOE framework or, or the optimizer framework. Um, you're also able to automate uh, your Abaca standard processes by leveraging your Python script to automate the post-processing or to automate uh, to some level the, the pa parameters sweep analysis as well. Um, we've also seen that using the, the, the Rescale framework, we're able to run job concurrently, uh, which save um, a, a, a really large amount of time. But you're also able to increase the call type or leverage specialized hour to, uh, to, to boost your result turn turnaround time. And then finally, um, using Rescale, you're able to uh, maximize your Abacus uh, token efficiency with the latest tailored hardware on the cloud. Um, so on that, um, uh, please come and sign up for, for, for Rescale. You're getting a free $20, $20 credit to try it uh, and to run your Abacus job. Uh, and we're also going to uh, to uh, have a, our next webinar on uh, March 7th, so please uh, join us for that. So on that, I think I'm going to go ahead and open it for, for questions. Okay, uh, thank you, Fanny. Um, I actually just wanted to chime in here. Um, on this $20 hardware credit, um, you'll be receiving the promo code for that in a follow-up email within the week. Um, and once you receive that promo code, uh, once you sign up, sign up for an account, you can, uh, you'll see a promotional code field at the bottom of the page under account settings where you can add the promo code. Um, but if your account is older than 30 days, you'll need to contact us at sales at rescale.com and we can apply that credit manually for you. Um, okay, so now on to uh, some q and A. I'm going to kick things off because we had a couple questions about licensing. So, uh, Fanny, can you please uh, go over the licensing options for Abacus on Rescale and tell us how the Abacus licenses are managed? Sure. So, um, um, so on Rescale, we have different uh, software package. Um, some some um, are going to, um, you'll be able to leverage more elastic license and demand license. Um, but for, for Abaca specifically, uh, we're following a bring your own license model. Uh, so you, you're going to continue to work with, uh, with DASO system on, uh, on getting your license. And we can either um, connect to your on-premise server through a SSH tunnel or VPN, or we can also host your license for you on, on, on our cloud and manage the license server for you. So that's the, the different option that's, uh, that's available. Okay, great, thank you. Um, okay, next question is, how do I know if my model is going to scale well? Uh, I, uh, the, um, the answer to that question is, well, first of all, you can probably go ahead and run it on Rescale to see how it's going to be as. But um, for, for Abaca specifically, um, if you look at Abaca standards um, for a, let's say, 2 million degree of freedom uh, model, um, your, your, your model is going to run efficiently between 32 and 128 core. Um, for Abaca's explicit, uh, there's a um, rough guideline that your, your model is going to scale well um, for five um, um, five thousand element per per call type. Okay, I just I want to remind our audience if you have any questions to type them into the GoToWebinar panel uh, question section and we'll answer them that way. Um, all right, the next question is: Is it possible to receive the ODB files after the analysis for post processing with Hyperview? Uh, so it's. Um, 
um, it is possible you're able to uh, to leverage um, to do a remote desktop session. So you can either download your ODB back in on your on-premise environment, or you can post-process it using Hyperview. But um, uh, it's going to uh, require a little bit of. Uh, um, I think we're, we're going to need to uh, install Hyperview for you on on our platform. So it's a, li it's a little bit of work there, but it's it's possible. Okay, and uh, what happens if a job fails? What do I pay for? Uh, so if a job fails, um, so so first of all, uh, we before you submit your job, we make sure that uh, and that we start a, a cluster. We make sure that the command is valid. We make sure that your input file are all in order. Uh, so we don't start a cluster before that is uh, that is checked. Uh, the other thing we're doing is we also sh we also uh, run a diagnostic to make sure that we're not using a, uh, a cluster node that is not robust. So when the cluster actually starts, we are sure that you um, you're, you're using something that's uh, that's robust and it's not going to fail. Now let's say um, let's say you run your backus job and for some reason it failed. Um, you're going to pay for for the, the cluster is as soon as the job fails, the cluster is going to automatically uh, stop, and you're just going to pay for the time that the cluster was running running for. Okay, and we've got a question on security. Um, how do you handle data security access restrictions, for example, for nuclear nuclear or defense projects? Um, so I think it's probably uh, better to take this uh, question offline. Uh, but overall, we have um, so we have um, the, uh, we have different layers of security. The first one is through uh, uh, IP restriction and uh, user login. Uh, we also integrate with single sign-on. Um, so if your company has that, we can leverage that. Uh, then once the, once you upload the data on, into Rescale, uh, the data are going to be encrypted uh, when they transfer from your on-premise to the cloud. Uh, then uh, when the, the only time that the files are decrypted is when it's running on the cluster, but the cluster is using a encrypted hard drive, so you, this way it's making sure that your data are uh, still like secured. And once the job are completed, the data are encrypted again and uh, sent back to uh, when it's sitting on our, on our storage. Um, there is also, um, as I say, IP restrictions that can be uh, that can be put in place. Uh, we're able to also work uh, within your firewall um, and, and work with you on uh, on that. Uh, but overall, it uh, it it. Actually, using the cloud can be more secure than using your own on-premise environment. Okay, um, is it possible to post-process Abacus results while the simulation is running on the cluster? Uh, it is. Uh, yeah, it is possible. You can at any point um, um, still um, post-process your result or monitor your results while your job is running. Uh, something I could not uh, show you, but you can. Uh, you can live tell um, your uh, simulation files while, while it's running, so you can look at your dat file or message file interactively while it's running, and you can also start a remote desktop session while your uh, while your job is running on a cluster. Okay, follow up question to that: Can I terminate a job that is running? You can terminate. You can manually terminate the a job that is running. Uh, it's going to automatically shut shut down the cluster and. Uh, and and you'll still have access and download automatically back all the the file that were generated. Okay, we've got a lot of questions here. Um, some of the rescale clusters have too little memory per core for Abacus standard. Do you have any clusters that are be better suited for Abacus than others? If so, what are they? Uh, so I'm, I'm going to need to look into the list again. Uh, let's see. So we have uh, we have some hardware with high uh, high memory. So if I um, just go ahead and uh, look at the list, um, for example, 
titanium have higher memory. Um, you also have um, some uh, some hardware with very high memory, like uh, let's say Topaz, um, that you're able to run uh, also on 32 cores with just one node. Um, <clears throat> So you have a large, large selection that allows you to uh, to run uh, um, memory intensive job uh, re required by Abacus standards. Do large nonlinear contact models scale well up to 128 cores? Uh, so that is more of an Abacus question um, that will be better addressed by uh, by Simulia. Uh, but from uh, from what I remember, um, if you use star contact pair, your model is going to scale pretty well. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's going to scale not as well if you use general contact. Uh, but I'm not entirely sure. It's pretty better if you check with, uh, with uh, your Simulia rep. Okay. Um, can Abacus and Star TCM run together on the same platform? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, so when you uh, when you you do and start a, a new job, um, you can uh, you can select um, Star CCM. Let's see, humans. Here we go. Um, and you can add a new software and run Abacus. Um, so that that is possible. So that's I, I think this is actually a really good point. Um, one value of Rescale is you only need one cloud and one environment for all of your different uh, simulation software. Okay. Um, can you tell tell us a little about data ingress and egress costs, please? Uh, data ingress. I'm, uh, I'm not sure what that means. So data transfer. transfer. Data transfer. Yeah. yeah. Um, so um, I think the uh, the best if we want to start talking about uh, yeah. So you're going to pay for the your compute time. You're also going to pay uh, for while the file is being stored or for um, when the the file is being transferred. Back and forth from from, from in, a, in or out of the clouds. Um, for more details, I think it's better if uh, if maybe uh, you can leave your contact information and we can uh, reach out reach out to you directly. Yeah, and on that note, um, we have been getting a lot of questions that I think are better answered offline. So uh, if we don't get to your question today, we'll be following up individually after the webinar. Uh, okay. Um, do we wanna? Let's see. We still have ten minutes, so we can continue. Sure. Um, yeah, I think a lot of these questions are best, hand, best okay. handled offline. Okay. Um, so, if there are any other remaining questions, now is the time to ask. Um, if not, uh, if your question didn't get answered, uh, we will answer um, after the after this webinar. Okay. Well, thank you again for everyone uh, for attending today, um, and have a great day. Bye. Thank you.